Good day, everybody. How are you all? This is Dr. Nandi. Today, we are going to talk about the problem on two sample t test. So, I will share my computer screen with you. Random samples of 41 left handed preschool children and 41 right handed preschool children were given several tests of motor skills to test if there is any if there is evidence of a difference between left-handed and right-handed children in motor skills so they have given a sample size sample mean and sample standard deviation for left-handed children and for right-handed children Try, test if there is a difference in motor skills between left-handed and right-handed preschool children at alpha equal to 0 0.05 notice in this problem population standard deviations are not given so solution, population standard deviations are not known. Population standard deviations are not known. Deviations are not known. So I use two sample t test t test okay that one is equal to left handed children and let two is equal to right handed children. <coughs> Let me create some space. So the question says, test if there's a difference in motor skills between left-handed and right-handed preschool children. Okay, so my alternate, if there is alternate is not, uh, there is a difference, so alternate is mu1 not equal to mu2. There is a difference in motor skills between left-handed children and right-handed children. And h sub 0 is mu1 equal to mu2. Okay. So, <clears throat> so first thing we will do in our calculator is stat stat then test I like test on the top row so stat then test on the top row then scroll down to two sample t test scroll down to two sample t test. So input is stats because we know the summary stats of the sample in both cases. And <clears throat> then x1 bar is equal to one is for left handed children is 97.5 okay x1 bar is 97.5 okay sx1 next one is sx1 is for left-handed children 17.5 N1, <clears throat> in both cases, is 41, okay? And then if I move this, uh, I can create some more space this way too. And maybe, yeah, I can move this a little bit up. Okay. 
Next is N1 is 41. I wrote that. Then X2 bar is mean for right-handed students is 98.1. 98.1. SX2 is 19.2. Standard deviation of right-handed students. So SX2 is 19.2, okay? And N2 is 41, N2 is 41. And what is my alternate? The next line is, uh, after N2, the next line, this is N2, okay? Is the alternate, mu1, and, and this is uh, not equal to mu2. So it's already flashing on not equal to mu to leave it at that. Okay. <clears throat> and then so then we go down to uh, not equal to mu two. So the next line, so bring it on not equal to mu two and keep it flashing on not equal to mu two. Pulled should always be no. Pulled. No. What does it mean? It means we are not assuming that the population standard deviations of left-handed and right-handed children are equal and therefore they are not pulled or brought together. Bottom line, population standard deviation of the two populations are not equal and therefore they are not brought together and pulled. So pulled is always no. That's a safe bet. And then you go to the next line. <clears throat> or then you go straight down to calculate as a matter of fact. Calculate. <clears throat> and hit enter. Okay. So we are looking for test statistic. Remember, this is a test statistic, T test statistic. So T test statistic. is minus 0 0.1478. What does it mean? It means x1 bar is greater than x2 bar, or sorry, this is negative. So x1 bar is less than x2 bar by 1.1478 times standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar. Okay, so this is the test statistic. Then we look at the p value. So p value is 0.882. This is the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme. as minus 0 0.1478 is 0 0.882. Now, alpha is given as 0 0.05. So P is greater than alpha. Decision and do not reject H0. Conclusion at alpha equal to 0 0.05, there is not enough evidence, not enough evidence to support HA, which is mu1 not equal to mu2, okay? So this is the first way of doing it. And there's a second way of doing it. So let me create some space. Second way in the... Okay. So back here.
second one. Remember our H zero is equal to mu one equal to mu two or mu one or H zero mu one minus mu two equal to zero and the alternate is a mu one not equal to mu two or H A is mu one minus mu two not equal to zero. Okay. So our alpha level is 0 0.05, then C is equal to one minus alpha is equal to one minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.95, because C level is a complement or opposite of the alpha level of significance. So let us calculate the 95% confidence interval interval for mu1 minus mu2. So we go to our calculator again, stat, then highlight test, and scroll down to the stat, test, and scroll down to two sample t interval. Why t? Because we do not know the population standard deviation. Interval i and t. So this is where you want to go. Okay, and hit enter. So all the column uh, rows are filled out already. Input on stats, everything is filled out. Change the C level to 0 0.95 because C level is confidence level, which is one minus level of significance or one minus 0.05 is 0 0.95. Hold is no, and we calculate. So the 95% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 is minus 8.675 comma 7.475. So the lower boundary of is lower boundary of 95% confidence interval, confidence interval is minus 8.675 and upper boundary, upper boundary of 95% confidence interval is 7.475. So let me create some more space. So if I draw the number line here, so this is the number line number line. The zero is somewhere over here. The lower bound is minus 8.675 and upper bound is somewhere over here is 7.475. This is your confidence interval. Okay. Notice zero is inside the 95% confidence interval. Confidence interval. Okay. Remember H0 is mu1 minus mu2 equal to zero. Alternate mu1 minus mu2 not equal to zero. Since zero is inside the 95% confidence interval, confidence interval, decision, give some more space. Decision, do not reject 
Eight zero. The same as before. Do not reject eight zero. That means in the population there may not be any difference between the motor skills of left-handed children and right-handed children. I'll stop here today. If you have any question, comment, please write me a note. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. If you like this video, please share with your friends. You and your friends, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button at the bottom right corner. I'll come back next time with another interesting problem, interesting solution. Take care. Have a nice day. See you next time.